Now, if we've got two vectors, 1, 5 and 2, 6, we know how to add them. And we know how to subtract them. Because A minus B is the same as A plus minus B, which is 1, 5 plus minus 2 minus 6. Minus 1 minus 1. So that's adding and subtracting, but what about multiplying? Now, there's lots of ways that we could think about multiplying vectors. And one of the ways, if we have two vectors A and B, is to say it's the magnitude of vector A multiplied by the magnitude of vector B multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. So this is a definition of multiplying vectors, but we could decide to define multiplying vectors in other ways. And there are, in fact, other ways, although not within the A-level math syllabus, in the A-level further math syllabus, we look at the cross product, but this is called the dot product. There's a dot there, sometimes called the scalar product. So this is the dot product. Product means to multiply. Or the scalar product. So this is a definition. This is the definition of this. And what we'll see in the remaining part of this video is why this is actually quite a useful way of defining what multiplication of vectors actually means. So we've got this definition of what multiplying vectors means. Let's look at the unit vectors i dot i. The magnitude of the unit vector is obviously 1. So the magnitude of the second vector i is also 1. The cosine of a vector, uh, the cosine of the angle between an, a vector and itself, uh, well the angle is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. So i dot i is 1 in the same way j dot j is 1 and k dot k is 1. Remember, i is the vector 1 naught naught, j is the vector naught 1 naught, k is the vector naught naught 1. That's in three dimensions. In two dimensions, obviously, we've only got the first two components. Let's think about the dot product i dot, I dot j. It's the magnitude of vector i, that's 1, the magnitude of the vector j, that's 1, and the cosine of the angle between them. Well, i is in the x direction, j is in the y direction, the angle between them is 90, cosine of 90 is naught. So that's true for any two unit vectors that the dot product of those is 0. So let's think about a vector a, which has got three components, a1, a2, a3, and the vector b, which has got three components, b1, b2, b3. I can write a as a1 in the i direction, a2 in the j direction, a3 in the k direction, and b I can write as b1 in the i direction, plus b2 in the j direction, plus b3 in the k direction. What's a dot b? Well, a dot b is a1i plus a2j plus a3k uh, dot b1i, b2j and b3k. So now let's multiply these uh, vectors out. I've got a dot b, so it's going to be uh, a1i dot b1i, a1i dot b1i, then it's going to be a1i dot b2j, it's going to be a1i dot b3k. So that's multiplied a1 by each of these terms. Now it's a2j times each of these terms, a2j times the dot second term, a2j dot the third term. Don't worry, this will all simplify in a minute. Then it's going to be a3k times every term here, a3k dot b2j and a3k dot b3k. 
Okay, now what does this all mean? Well, what's the magnitude of A1i? Well, a i is a unit vector, so the magnitude of this vector is A. What's the magnitude of this vector? Well, it's B. I dot I, well, because uh, what we did on the previous slide, the magnitude of that times the magnitude of that, and then the cosine of the angle between them. Well, the angle between I and I is naught, and the cosine of naught is 1. So A1I, magnitude of that is A1, magnitude of this vector is B1, and the angle between them is 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1. Now let's move on to this. The angle between I and J is 90, and the cosine of 90 is 0. So when I do that dot product, it's the answer is 0, because the angle between I and J is 90. The angle between I and K is 90. The angle between J and I is 90. Cosine of 90 is 0. Leave this for the moment, but J and K, the angle between those is 90. K and I, the angle between those is 90. Cosine of 90 is 0. So I can actually ignore all of these terms because the angle between them is 90 and the cosine of 90 is 0. So that leaves this term, this term and this term. We've already seen that this is A1 times B1. There it is. This, J and J, the cosine of 0 is 1. The, the magnitude of that vector is A2. The magnitude of that vector is B2. So this becomes A2, B2. And then uh, this one here becomes A3, B3. So all of this is just to say that when we multiply uh, two vectors using the dot product, the here, this bit here, the answer is that. So what does this mean? Suppose we've got two vectors. 4 minus 2, 3. And 2, 1 minus 6. The dot product is A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3. So it's 8 minus 2 minus 18, uh, so that's minus 12. So the dot product, A dot B in this case, the mo when we multiply this vector by this vector, the answer is minus 12. You end up with a number, or a scalar. That's why it's called the scalar product, because the answer gives you a number. So the dot product of these two vectors is minus 12. So there we are. The dot product is minus 12. But do you remember that we said that a dot b is the magnitude of a multiplied by the magnitude of b multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them? We can actually work out the magnitude of vector a. The magnitude of vector a is the square root of 4 squared plus minus 2 squared plus 3 squared. So that's 16, 20, that's the square root of 29. The magnitude of B is the square root of 2 squared, 1 squared and minus 6 squared, uh, which works out to be the square root of 41. So we've got these two vectors. We know the dot product's minus 12 and we also know that A dot B is the magnitude of A, magnitude of B, cosine of the angle between them. That's the square root of 29 times the square root of 41 times the cosine of the angle between them. So here's the important part of all this. This means that minus 12 must equal root 29 root 41 times the cosine of the angle between the vectors. In other words, the cosine of the angle between the vectors is minus 12 over root 29, root 41. And that works out to be uh, 0 0.348008. So we've got the cosine of that angle is minus 0 0.348089. So we can now work out what, what that angle is. Simply by doing inverse cosine of that number If I get this right, it's 110.3655. So this dot product 
that's 110 degrees to 3 sig figs. This dot product has allowed us to work out the size of the angle between two vectors in three dimensions.